OpenAI just released GPT 4.5 and I've had almost a full day now playing around with it, testing it. So I wanted to share some of my results with you in this video. I compared it against some other models, including the new Claude 3.7 model, as well as the old chat GPT model too. And as far as who has access to GPT 4.5 right now, and by the way, this is still in research preview. So some of this might get improved right now, as I'm recording this, it's only available in the $200 a month plan. And I'll tell you right now, definitely do not upgrade to get access to this. This will come to the plus and the team's plan next week. And if you have the education plan or the enterprise plan, you'll get it the week after that. And based on everything OpenAI has said about this, if you look down, you'll see there is so many models now that just about everyone, including myself, is just getting completely confused and overwhelmed. So GPT-5 is supposed to combine all these and basically have a model picker in the background. So you no longer have to choose between a reasoning model and one that's good for writing and one that's faster, one has scheduled tasks. It should all be into one. So I can't wait for that. That's gonna simplify a lot of this. But for now, we'll choose this one. A Couple of things I wanna point out about it before I'll demo it here. Okay, OpenAI is calling this the largest and the best model for chat, but they are also saying this is not a reasoning model. So when it comes to benchmarks, it falls way short of things like O1 or DeepSeek R1. It's not doing any type of reasoning. When five comes out, that's supposed to have reasoning by default. 4.5 is supposed to be the last non-reasoning AI model. And a few things I wanted to test in this video is saying when it comes to simple Q&A accuracy here, that it scores higher than GPT-40 and even the reasoning model here. So it has a broader knowledge base, 62% here. And it's also saying when it comes to hallucination, it is hallucinating at a lower rate. So at 37% versus 61%, that's kind of very high. So 37% will do a hallucination test to double check that. And a couple of things they said here for a specific use case, they're saying this has better emotional intelligence. So for tasks that require to think more like a human and talk like a human and have empathy like a human, it does a better job. We'll go ahead and test that too. Okay, let's start with a very basic search-based chat here. And I'm not even gonna turn on search. I notice if you don't turn on search, it still will do some searching online. Create a simple table comparing the cost of GPT 4.5 and 4.0 and 4.0 mini and Claude 3.7 Sonnet. Now, I wanna show you the API cost. If you're a developer and you're wanting to build on top of GPT 4.5, let me just show you, this is kinda of wild. Okay, so it's doing web search. It's gonna create the table for us. Okay, look at this right here. We have GPT 4.5 at $75 for a million tokens. Okay, compared to 4.0 at two and a half dollars. And this one is usually, if I'm building anything with the API or using the API for automations and things like that, this is what I'm typically choosing. And uh, yeah, this is 15 cents. And look at on the output side, $150. That is just crazy. This is not at all usable for anyone that's doing anything. <laughs> in the world of developing apps with AI. No one is gonna use this. So I'm very confused by this pricing right here. And again, because they're short on GPUs right now, as I'm recording, this is only in the pro plan. And by the way, the first time I ran this prompt here, I just did a live here, but the first time I ran it, it actually gave me the wrong number here. I was using 4.5, this should have been 150. It wasn't 150, so I looked at the source. It put the source here, I clicked on the source and it really, it was like behind a paywall. So I don't know where he got that information from. So then I asked one more time, I said, no, can you double check your answers? And this time he pulled the information from OpenAI and it was accurate. So this time it was OpenAI and Anthropic, which it should get that information directly from them, but he got it from other sources the first time around and one part of it was wrong. If you made a simple mistake like this, and I'm counting on this, let's say I'm developing an app and I'm trying to use AI to figure out how much it's gonna cost me and it literally gives me the cost at half the rate it should be, that's a huge problem and that is some of the issues with hallucination. So let's do the hallucination test next. Okay, this one, it says describe each of these families of mangoes basically and I named four. This one I just totally made up and I change it from time to time. I think I called it banana cream on the last test but I made sure there is no such thing called orange cream just through a Google search and I made this one up. Let's see if it's gonna go through and give us an answer here. 
Okay, still going here, so number four, but let's look at number three. Orange cream from Florida, USA, medium size. Yeah, totally just made up all kinds of nonsense about this type of mango that is not a real mango. Just, I literally just put two words next to each other and it went ahead and uh, gave me an answer. So if I use something that is search-based, let me see if I turn on search, is it gonna try to actually look online? Yeah, so the first time around it did not do a search. This time it looks like it's doing a search first if I do turn this on. But again, as you saw in the previous example, even when I didn't have search turned on, it did do a search and it still got the information wrong the first time around. And usually when I do these tests, I just wanna show you my results right off the bat. I'm not like picking and choosing from these prompts. I'm showing you exactly what I get on my very first attempt at it. So then I'm not cherry picking and trying to figure out which model is best that way. I'm just showing you the actual results here. Yeah, even with search right here, it's still totally made up. 4.5 search turned on, orange cream. Okay, let's just try this with perplexity here and I'm just gonna leave this on auto so it's not picking a very specific model here. And let's see, okay, orange cream, note, there is no specific information available on orange cream mango. All right, well, I don't understand why ChatGPT did not get that right. It's technically doing the same type of search here, but it was not able to get this. This is the answer I was looking for inside of 4.5 with or without search, it was a fail for both. Okay, so this is telling us it's also really good at writing and it's also good at emotional intelligence. So I just made up the scenario. I laid off half my team due to budget cuts, write a sincere message and share that with my remaining employees to assure them and maintain trust. Let's send this out. Okay, I read this off screen. You could pause it if you wanna read through it, but it is actually really good. So I think he did a really nice job adding empathy, the formatting is nice, the, the length of it is really good. So this is kind of the subtle difference between 4.0 and 4.5 and some other models too, where I couldn't clearly make, that's why I spent a whole day kind of testing this out before I made this video. It's very subtle, the improvements, right? Some, some of the things that haven't improved were very obvious, but some of the things that did improve like this little specific tone as far as emotional, intelligent goes, you could see that if you really use it all the time and really look into the details of it. Okay, let me check his writing ability now with something a little technical, but still very straightforward consumer type of a question. My laptop battery drains very fast. Can you give me specific tips on improving battery life? Okay, gave us 10 different tips and I was going through these and yeah, a lot of these actually make sense. The formatting is straightforward. The language I really like very straight to the point. It's not strange in any way, it's not promotional in any way. So this is exactly the type of answer I was looking for. So, so far, good on emotional intelligence, good on writing. Let me just compare this against 4.0 though, because I feel like I was getting good answers out of 4.0 with this type of question. Okay, power and display settings, same kind of thing there. Low power mode, reduced screen brightness. It did the exact same thing. It gave me the Windows option and the Mac option here and it even broke it up into categories, system maintenance, hardware, right? It, it kind of gave me different tips inside of each category. So I don't know, maybe this is actually more comprehensive. We got 17 tips and I did not give it a, any specific information on how many tips I was looking for. Okay, so I guess I don't see a big improvement there with four or five. Okay, and it's telling me it's really good at coming up with ideas, right? Having kind of a smart partner to talk to. I wanna create a new company that utilizes AI to help business owners. Give me five ideas for that. Okay, AI powered financial forecasting assistant. Okay, automated AI customer service agent. That's good. AI content and social media manager. That's good. AI powered inventory manager. That's a good one too. AI business insight platform. Yeah, these are all pretty good ideas. Let me see if I ask it to give me more information about number five. Say so break down number five for me. Okay, AI powered platform designed to centralize, analyze and interpret data from various aspects of a business such as marketing, sales, operation, finance. Yeah, I could probably use an AI powered tool like this for small and medium sized business owners, entrepreneurs with limited resources. Okay, we got a breakdown of the core functionality of it. Yeah, this is definitely a pass. It's doing a really good job. And I just checked Claude 3.5 Sonnet here, same thing. And it sort of gave me very similar type of thing. Automated customer 
Insight Engine, AI Contract and Analysis and Negotiation Assistant. This one actually pretty good. Supply Chain Management. So similar. Let me ask you to give me more about number four. Okay, so for number four, you started with core functionalities this time. So same kind of thing, business impact. But the answer I got out of ChatGPT, a whole lot more comprehensive. So we had the target audience core functionality here, and it's more detailed tech stack, monetization model, key benefits, right? So we got a lot closer to an entire business plan right off that very first prompt. Okay, let's see if it's any good at analyzing document. Any red flags, I'm gonna give it almost no context, okay? I'm just literally gonna upload this NDA document. Okay, so the first thing it's saying is you need some kind of a termination of the relationship in there. It's indefinite right now, so you may wanna put something like three to five years. Here it's telling me to exclude some things that are not necessary, add a clause to address compelled disclosure. Yeah, this is actually really good. I think he did a good job here. And that was just a boilerplate NDA. Actually, it was like a made up one, didn't have any information. I just wanted to see how it would go through a legal document here. And I think he did a good job with that too. But again, if I choose 4.0, which I was doing these type of things with 4.0 before, okay, this is gonna give us a similar breakdown probably. No time limit, right? So it's asking for the same kind of termination. No mention of consequence if there is a breach. Well, that's kind of a big thing we should probably add. No explicit clause on third part. Yeah, so I don't know. Again, not a huge leap. And I know I'm being critical of it, but you know, they released like five different updates since the release of three. So when there is a big update, like another big frontier model like GPT-4.5, I was expecting a whole lot more. I literally spend a whole day trying to find some benefit for wanting to use this over 4.0. And today, after I did my testing, I reverted back to 4.0. And one of the reasons why I'm not using 4.5 as much, I'll show you right here. Okay, let me just show you the difference in speed. I'm using 4.5 and I have them side by side with 4.0 here. And I'm gonna send both at the same time. And you'll just look at the speed of these right away. This is one of the slowest models I've ever used. And this is not a reasoning model. The reasoning models, fine. They need to be slow because we need to get accurate answers. You need to analyze. If we use something like a free model, like Gemini Flash, for example, and I ask the same exact question here, I mean, look at the speed of this thing. Even if I use Claude here and ask the same question, the speed is, again, much better than GPT. 4.5, but also much better than 4.0. This one always gives shorter answers, I found, Claude, compared to the GPT models, especially the new one is giving us more comprehensive answers. So there is some good, but there is also a lot of bad. So I have a feeling with 5.0, a lot of that complexity is just gonna go away. We're not gonna have models to choose from. Reasoning is gonna be the default. Speed is gonna improve. And we're gonna have something where we don't really have to study this like every single day to figure out what's best, which app to use, which model to use. So we'll see where it goes from here. Let me know what you thought of it. If you have a chance to test it out for yourself, love to hear your feedback. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next video.